All right, so here we are today. We're getting ready to leave work. And I thought I'd make a little video over on why you and probably most people who don't like carbs have that opinion. So here we are in the old 74 F100. We have an O2 gauge and a vacuum gauge. It's gonna assist us in um, seeing what we wanna see today. This is our five speed swapped F100. You can see one, two, three, four, five. So I got a few videos on how I did that. Super cheap and affordable. So um, anyway, getting to the point here, we're gonna fire it up. And um, the biggest thing with carbs is that they don't self adjust. And that's, um, you know, that really you incur a lot of issues because of that. Um, now on this truck, at this current point, I don't have a return line on. So, um, or, or on it rather. So what we're gonna see when I fire it up is it's going to start out lean. And then as the engine warms up, it's gonna start atomizing the fuel better and it's gonna richen up. And then as I sit here and let it idle, like what you would have if you were driving down the road, um, or stuck, or I, I guess rather stuck in traffic for a long period of time. Um, when you're sitting there in traffic and it starts to run bad or, or whatever, um, you'll see that uh, air fuel ratio start to lean out. And if you have a return line, you don't have these situations. And on my 65 Galaxy, I do. And um, I, I drove that thing all through Virginia heat and never had a problem, but um, I haven't gotten to it yet. So it's a good opportunity to do this video here. I'm gonna give it a couple pumps and... All right, so I don't have a choke on this rig. So here you can see starting out, we're really good and lean. 14.5, 14.6. And if I let my foot off the gas here, as we don't have a choke, it's gonna kill itself off. So um, you'll see here, it's gonna warm up pretty quick. I've left the heat crossover on the intake still. So um, it's gonna heat that intake up um, at a fairly rapid pace. And our air fuel ratio is going to slowly get richer and richer. All right, so at this point, we've been running for just about over a minute and um, you know, our air fuel ratio is dropping back as that fuel begins to atomize. Um, that intake plenum heats up because we still have our crossover uh, on this guy hooked up with the exhaust because it is a driver truck and we do start up in 30 some odd degree weather. So um, as it warms up again, we're gonna continue to see this. And obviously it doesn't take too much because we're not even, um, we don't really even have any temp up in the truck yet. And as you can see, we don't have to give it any more foot feed. now. Um, normally we have a choke on this thing, but for the purpose of this video, um, you know, if I had the choke, it'd kind of distort some of this for you guys. So, um, as we go through, and as you can see, even as I've been talking, this has been, uh, warming up. So, um, now you'll notice it's actually going to then go too rich and it'll start leaning back out. Now what happens when it starts leaning back out is, uh, that, that carburetor is starting to heat soak. So the fuel becomes much less dense and then we're gonna start going the opposite way on the O2 gauge. Now, if you have a return line, this doesn't happen, but that effect that you're gonna see is what you experience when you're sitting in traffic for a long time and the engine starts running bad. Um, that's really what you're experiencing. The, the fuel's just, um, you know, when it heats up, it gets less dense and uh, your air fuel ratio is leaning out on you. So anyway, I got a few things I gotta pick up here off the dock. So it's gonna give the truck a little bit of time to idle and really, um, you know, heat soak and sit here like what you'd have in traffic. So I'm gonna jump on down there and um, load that up and just let her run the whole time and and then we can, we can watch that O2 gauge. But as you can see, even as we've sat here, that fan is blowing that hot air from the radiator right at the carburetor and we're starting to lean out now at this point. And as you can see, as we rev the engine up and get some fuel moving through that carburetor, it's going to then richen up again because we're pushing that hot fuel out. So um, anyway, I'm gonna get this truck all loaded up and we'll hit the road. All right, so it took me about 20 minutes to load everything up and our uh, engine is up to operating temperature here. We're now blowing that, uh, <laughs> that hot air onto the carburetor pretty good from that radiator fan. And um, as you can see, the uh, air fuel ratio is slowly going up it's now in the 14s and blip blipping up there getting close to 15 in some scenarios and um you know again that's that's just from that fuel getting uh hotter and getting less dense and this is why you 
when you set up your carburetor, you I always advocate for setting it up um, at operating temp. Now, um, if you let it sit and idle with your hood closed and everything, it's no matter what you do, it's going to start getting that fuel hot. And as you can see, this is kind of the result. So this is really as bad as it ever gets for me. But this truck has a big, big open engine bay. You know, it really does well to combat the underhood heat, where it's really resists any um, issues to that regard. so that pretty much does it we're home and as you can see that air fuel ratio came back into a reasonable range um, you know and that's that's just the thing with carburetors they're um, they're just set a certain way and then as conditions change they don't change with them so the best thing you can do for them is keep everything that's uh, that that carburetor is receiving uh, keep everything consistent so your fuel your outside air temp plays a factor and that's why all those old school um, all those old school uh, engines have the heat riser and the flap and the intake you know they do a lot of or they go through a lot of effort I guess back in the day to keep a consistent air temperature going into that carburetor for these exact reasons She's cleaning up all the interior because she insisted on it. You know how I am. I would have just left it. So, it's a good thing. With all the crap out of it, we're noticing that it has a pretty darn good bed floor in it, despite the rust on the sides. So that's just what you see with typical Iowa weather driving, Midwestern weather. thing with these sensors is you want to come in at a 45 degree angle and um, there are, is some reasoning behind that uh, moisture building up on it and whatever they just want to be able to drain out <laughs> 